I, I was struck by the fact that one of the quotes in the book is a, a guy saying, you know, uh, LeBron knows more about business than I did when I was his age, and that guy is Warren Buffett. <laughs> so uh, what is it that he has done so in such a savvy way that, that will become a template here? I think there are two things especially. One, realizing that he was going to have a long career, and he made decisions that were not based on the best deal he could make today, but would be the best long-term deal, which is unusual for a teenager. His shoe deal being the number one example of that, he actually turned down about $30 million extra from Reebok because Nike, he felt, was the better company. And that's a decision as an 18-year-old you're not going to see a lot of people make. Um, the other thing is he's learned how to capture value off the court. He learned that people just want to be in business with him. He learned that people will pay him or give him equity for having his name attached to projects. And he's been smart not giving those away. He's made a few bad choices here and there. But generally, he's looked to capture value. And... One of his worst moments of his career from a business standpoint, the decision, yes. you may remember. Yes, was, notorious. Even though it was poorly executed, the concept was very smart. He was capturing the value. This was when, just so everyone knows, when he decided and uh, a reporter really kind of off, offhand came up with the idea of, hey, why don't you, when you announce whether you're going to stay at the cabs or, or leave, buy to, or they didn't have to buy it, but do it yourself and control the experience. And you were saying, even though it went so poorly for him, it took him a year and maybe more for his reputation to recover, but it's still maybe a preview of athletes doing more like that. Right. Like he got ESPN to give him an hour of time in prime time for free. He sold advertising, gave the money to charity, uh, and did something that most people just give away for free, which is saying where he's going to play. The execution was bad, but the concept was really good, and he's, he's morphed it and gotten better on that uh, with deals like that in the future. Does he have advisors? Does he have mentors helping him do all this? Yes. Well, he has a couple of guys who he got into business with early that were very smart. Uh, one of them is, a, is a, you know, a money manager in Southern California named Paul Walker, who's got a very small practice. His first client was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Huh. He also works with Jimmy Iovine, who uh, helped LeBron get into, into Beats very early. LeBron traded promotion of Beats for a couple of points. When it sold to Apple for $3 billion, he reaped over $50 million, way more than what he would have gotten just signing a straight endorsement contract. Um, Maverick Carter uh, has been a really good person, even though he was really young when he took over, Maverick Carter being his, uh, his manager and has now gone in to lead his media uh, business. And he's not been afraid to take advice from people like Warren Buffett, who he went out <laughs> at age 23. I know that's, it's commonplace for people to want to go to the Oracle of Omaha, but LeBron was 23 years old. Wow. when he went out and met him. They also made windy. inroads in Sun Valley and different things. But since you brought up media, let's talk about that for a second, because this summer he has Space Jam 2. Uh, by the way, why, why is no one participating with him? They're afraid <laughs> he's going to make them look bad? Yeah, well, I think that story got a little bit taken out of uh, context. Um, he is in the process of casting, as well as Warner Brothers in the process of casting. When you cast any movie, you have demands, you know, your, your first choice. A couple of players who they've shown interest in have said, I just can't do it for various reasons. Doesn't mean they hate him, but, um, you know, certainly Space Jam 2 is a major, major thing for him. He's done a lot of media projects, but nothing the scope of in this movie. In what way is it going to be major for him, fi just financially and in terms of future movie projects? I mean, Well, why? he has a development deal with Warner Brothers. And War everything that they've done to this point, various television shows and digital products, has been building up to this. And Warner Brothers... Is, is, is time war operation, and they have new management. Several of the people who brought him in have now left the company. So if this is a hit, I could see a multi-picture deal that goes on and sets him up for three, four, five pictures down the road. If it doesn't do well, I think it challenges that portion of his media business. And so they're filming it this summer. It comes out in 2021. Their hope mm -hmm. is by then the Lakers have it going again. I was and he just... goes right from a 2021 finals into the release of Space Jam 2. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch Space Jam 1 before <laughs> 2 comes out just to make sure that I'm all uh, set. Brian, we got to go, but just how <laughs> devastated is he to be missing the playoffs? It's one of the biggest setbacks of his career. Um, he went to L.A. hopefully to raise the Lakers brand right. to be part of a, of, a, of a runway towards huge post-career. He still can do that, but it's hurt him. And not only that, their prospects of short-term improvement are a little shaky. To say the least. Brian, uh, congrats on the book. Thanks Thank for joining so us. Thank you so much. Appreciate Brian it. Brian Windhorst from ESPN.